Hey guys, Mike Morales here at Fit Factory Kayak and Tackle. Hey, today we're gonna basically do a review of the Hobie Outback, but it's kind of a different kind of review. We're gonna review the inner workings of the Hobie Outback, and we're gonna basically dissect this boat so that you guys can see how the um, engineering went into things such as the rudder, the guardian, um, the steering handles, all that stuff from an inside view of the boat, just to get a better overall understanding of how the system works. This particular boat itself is a warranty hull. Basically, this boat did have a crack on the scupper. And just to kind of show you guys what the telltale sign of a cracked scupper hole is that if you look right over here, okay, and you look in, you're looking at these scuppers specifically, these are the aft and the fore scuppers, um, the trunk or the cockpit scuppers, whatever you want to call them. But if you look right over here at this forward scupper here, you'll see that very tiny little crack there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that crack right there is what is causing this hole to leak. And all you're seeing is just the beginning of that crack. These scuppers are reinforced with PVC lining, but once we get inside of this hole, you're gonna be able to see how that crack basically goes all the way through uh, the scupper of the hole. So more to come. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the rear carry handle. And now we're gonna do just pop this guy off, break that one bolt off. All right, now we'll just get down to the action here. All right guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut the scuppers out so we can keep those intact, intact so you guys can see how that works. Okay. Just about got this guy split in half, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the rudder drum and also cut the uh, drive well, so. We'll get right on it. Okay, now we're just gonna cut out the, um, uh, I guess the rudder port, which basically runs the rudder through the actual hull itself. And the last thing I think we gotta do is just cut the Mirage port out. So hopefully this will crack our open. Here we go. All right, here we go, it's the crack open. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. All right, we're gonna get this guy set up and we'll stay tuned so we can go over every little detail on it. All right guys, well here it is. This is the split outback guys. And you know, we, uh, we have these two foams that were basically here. Um, these are what are zip tied along the inside of your, you've got two of them. They're zip tied along your scuppers. And these are for a different, couple of different reasons, obviously flotation being one of them. And the second reason why they put these is to also add a little bit of rigidity to the top of the hole, just to add some support. So these are the foam blocks. You usually find them zip tied back here. And this is basically the way they run. Next thing guys is the rudder. The rudder, the steering. You basically have dual steering on the new Outbacks, right? And as if you look at both of the, these from the inside, you have both tubes. Uh, both the left and right tubes that'll run along the side of the inside the boat and go directly to the egress. Now, keep in mind, this is very difficult to re you know repair, um, run a line through because you really can't get inside the hole to get to these unless you cut the circular hatch. But um, but just to kind of give you guys an idea of how these things run, these will actually crisscross from left to right, right to left. You guys can see the crisscross there. And then this is your rudder up down cord, okay? So a lot of times people who put the hatch in here will make a mistake and cut through this cord, okay? So just to let you know how the cord runs, basically just runs inside of your scuppers from the up down release line. And there's a piece of bungee in here, guys. And so there's a lot of people that wanna know, you know, you know how, does, how do we get the spring back in the um, rudder release? Well, you'd have to replace this bungee 
that runs along the inside. And it's very simple, but pretty smart engineering. It's two knots within the main line. And then you've got that bungee that adds the, the elasticity to the cord. Lastly is the Guardian, um, you know, up down. This will basically run from here directly to your Guardian plate for your transducer. And this is the same, same scenario, guys. You have your rudder tube with your piece of elastic bungee in between to kind of keep the tension on your up down handle uh, for the transducer. Okay. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention about the up down guys are also the use of pulleys, you know, in order to, you know, make pulling these, you know, whether it be the rudder or the transducer, make the pull, the, the ease of pulling. They've used these carbo cheeks right here that are basically molded in and most anything that you use from an up down is going to have an inline um, carbo cheek or pulley to help with resistance and lifting those things. And PAs, man, they've got tons of them, okay? So they really go above and beyond on those portions also to help to help with basically using the boat. So you've got one for your transducer, and on the back side, you also have one for your um, rudder up there, okay? So that is basically the lines as they run themselves, okay? So as you guys can see, there's a lot of, there's some engineering that goes into the steering of these boats. Um, and um, it's pretty, pretty simple actually, okay? All right, so when we, the reason why this boat has been split, guys, was because it was a hull replacement. And we showed you guys at the beginning where that crack started in the actual scupper itself. Well, just to let you guys know why these take on so much water from those scupper cracks. If you look right back over here, <clears throat> you could see how that split runs all the way the entire length of that scupper. So that water just basically floods into the hole uh, with the length of this scupper crack, guys. How does this happen? You know, it, to me, it looks like compression, to be honest with you. It looks like either we strapped down the kayak too hard or we had it flat on the ground and we put a bunch of our gear and stuff in it and left it for a couple of days and basically just caused that sucker to just split from the compression. I don't really know. It could have been from the scupper cart just kind of going down, maybe a flight of steps where it just, it just basically cracked. But this seems more like of a squash than an actual, um, you know, flexing from something being up in the scupper. So uh, that's my only thought to it. Not really sure. Um, but that's basically how that's, you know, that's where the, where the issue is. And this is very difficult <coughs> to repair. It's hard to get a welding machine in there. And when you get a welding, it's very difficult to get the entire seam of that. So that's that. <clears throat> Guys, if you look at the scuppers themselves, you know, Hobie takes a lot of time, you know, why wow, Hobies are so expensive and all this other crap, right? Guys, they put a lot of emphasis on the stress points, okay? So if you look at the scuppers themselves, this portion of the plastic scupper is super thick, um, very thick gauge at the joints of these scuppers. You also have the, the, the pressed in reinforced scuppers in there, uh, scupper protectors or the PVC. If you look over here, I can tell you that we rarely see any cracking or leaks coming from the Mirage port itself. And I can tell you, it's real simple guys. This stuff is extremely thick, man. This is some really thick plastic. Uh, they put a lot of reinforcement along the seams here and um, that's pretty much the reason why we don't see a lot of these guys cracking uh, you know all my guys can tell you this this is very rare to see if you look around where the um transducer um goes in for your guardian super thick um reinforced plastic around here this does take some weight um from the seat and that kind of thing so they do a lot of reinforcement if you look at all of the, the molded in um, pad eyes, you know, these are all the pad eye placement points. Uh, there's no e egress or ingress into the boat from all of these pad eyes that are screwed in, molded, screwed in. Um, <laughs> you come back here to the rudder housing where this takes a big brunt of, you know, whether you hit something. I mean, look at how thick that stuff is. I mean, that's some really thick plastic. They go above and beyond to reinforce all of these stress points, guys. So. Pretty impressed with the overall, you know, basically design of the boat, but also um, the emphasis they put in a lot of these um, these vulnerable areas. Now, some some key areas, guys, that I think that are important if you really want to dry this boat out. I think there's some vulnerability from moisture getting into the boat, and if you look over here where we have all of these. Um, 
you know, these plates for, you know, all of these just basic um, sheet metal screws. You know, there's not any type of goop or anything in all of these holes that run along here. Th these are your rear mounts. And if you look up here in the forward mounts and the mat pockets, kind of the same scenario. You got all of these little, you know, um, sheet metal screws running through with no nuts. There's no goop. And there's a lot of holes, guys. So if you wanted to really, say you wanted to go BTB or what have you, I would pull out all of these screws and basically um, either goop them up or <coughs> some type of M3. I like to use 5200. You know, this would really dry out the boat. Some of the areas where they do use it, uh, very, very rare, but you'll see some goop being used by Hobie. And you'll see up here that, you know, they've got goop in some of these vulnerable areas around the hatch. All right, guys, so this is the actual um, bottom side of the hole, if you will. Um, really not a lot to it, guys. A lot of the stuff we already talked about. Some of the things that I do want to point out <coughs> is obviously the, um, the through hole brass inserts for both your handles. Um, on the PAs, they use these as well for your actual um, um, anchor trolley. But these guys are, are molded in. Got to be real careful on these brass inserts, guys. As, you know, these are stainless on brass. Got to make sure you don't cross thread. We have a lot of issues where people are replacing handles or what have you. They put the screw in wrong and it cross threads it. It ends up stripping this, this guy out. It's very difficult to, re to repair, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you wanted to know how the brass are, inserts are inserted, they're actually molded into the boat itself, okay? You look at the lines of this outback, you know, this is your actual rudder entry point. Um, very, very simple, but clean design. You see the chines in the bottom of the boat. Um, your transducer port, everything that goes into the guardian plate. You know, this is kind of that whole piece there. Moving forward, if you guys can see here, you see your four scuppers and then your mirage porthole where your mirage drive would go. This is the nodule for your... Um, cell port so that cell port will basically attach to the bottom to the top and uh, basically get molded into the boat itself here as well so it's the overall design of the hull of the outback um, really really nice boat to me they're i think their best boat yet and um been happy with it aside from some of the scupper issues a lot of people have questions about hey man i got my boat in and there's this big like blem here Guys, this is the excess resin from the actual mold itself. You can kind of see it here where it kind of piled up. It happens, it's just part of the molding process. When they're, I guess, tumbling this boat and it comes to a rest, it probably rests down in that particular area. So uh, just a heads up, it's nothing major. Um, if you see that, it's not a blem, it's just part of the molding process of the boat, okay? All right, cool. So guys, that's it. I mean, that's the boat in general, man. This is, um, hopefully you can get a really good picture, an idea of, of your boat. You know, if you're having issues or concerns or rudder issues, well now you can kind of see a bird's eye view of, uh, of how it's constructed. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to write down in the comments and, and I'm not very good at getting back at them, but I'll try my best or you can call us here at the shop. We'll be happy to help you guys out. All right. Hey, till next time, guys. Hopefully, we'll see you out on the water tight lines.